Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you a few of the new features within ArtCam DualSmith 2011. And first of all, I'm just going to go onto my internet search engine and I'm going to type in Celtic Knot and go into the images for that. What I want to do is to show you how to convert a really low resolution image into some vector artwork and then wrap that around a ring. So I'm going to be using our new enhanced bitmap to vector tool to do this and I think you'll be impressed with the results. So I'm going to choose let's say this image here right click on that and select copy now I'm not going to save this anywhere I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard and then I'm going to right click on ArtCam and then paste there you can see that gives me a box which is just a preview of where to paste it so I can select anywhere and that will paste the image in there I'll just zoom in on this image you can see it's quite pixelated there are lots and lots of different shades of grey and we have all of these jagged edges what I'm going to do is to use the bitmap to vector tool to just trace around the edge of this particular image now if you would have used this tool in the past you would have noticed that the overall result would not have been that great to be honest you would have probably have had to do a lot of cleaning up of the output vectors you would more than likely have to use the vector doctor to clean the parts up and you would more than likely be quicker to just actually trace the image by hand so if I click here for the bitmap to vector we now have a reduced colors here if I select that that opens up a new dialog box which gives me a slider bar to adjust the number of colors I'm going to bring that down to two colors and then OK that here we have the speckle size basically that is a pixel tolerance size so for instance if I had one rogue pixel at the side of this image if that was set to 2 it wouldn't create a vector around that pixel if it was set to anything below 1 then it would actually create a vector around that particular pixel the smoothness is quite self explanatory the higher the value the more curvy or wavy that the actual vectors will be when they are output the lower that the value that is the more rigid and the more straight the vectors will be so I'm just going to create the vectors now close the bitmap to vector and then just adjust my contrast slider bar if I just zoom in here on the bottom right hand section here you can see it's giving me some really nice vectors and they're just following the actual image and it's not giving me all of these pixelated jagged edges so these vectors are actually good enough now to just be machined straight off what I want to do is to make this particular vector quite large so I'm just going to transform that I'll just center that first and I'm just going to make that quite large up to the size of the sheet and then just apply that and I'm going to go onto my 3D view now just toggle the vector visibility so I can see those turn off my zero plane if I wish I'm just going to select all of the vectors double click on those to open up the shape editor I'm going to create a dome 15 degrees and 2.5 millimeters high and I'll just add that
So that's created a shape. Close the shape editor and I'm just going to take off my vectors. So there you can see that's created a relief in a matter of seconds from a really re low resolution image. So I'm just going to open up my front relief and rename this relief layer to Celtic Knot and I'm going to show you a new feature within 2011. Uh, open up the clip art library. Here you can see lots of clip arts that we have available within ArtCam. There are over 500 pieces of clip art available for you to use. We have lots of different libraries ranging from greenery to animals for instance. What I'm going to do is to create a new folder. This is for this particular example. So I'm going to make a new folder called Dual Smith Demo and then OK that. This message here is just telling me that there is nothing in that particular library. I'm going to change that by selecting this Celtic Knot relief layer and just dragging and dropping into the clip art library. So now that is saved within the clip art library. I no longer need this relief here now because it's saved within there. I can just close this now. I don't need it it's saved so I can use this part at a later date. This is particularly useful if I'm creating lots of different shapes that I use on a regular basis. I could save them within my library and then just keep on importing those back in to ArtCam and manipulating them as I see fit. So I'm just going to create a new project now. I'm not going to save the changes. And I'm going to go to Models. I'm going to create a square shank. It's going to be size M and the width is going to be 6 millimeters. And here you can see the shank in the 2D view. If we go to the 3D view you can see there's my shank. What I want to do is to create a channel going through the center of this ring. So I'm going to just offset the center line and I'm going to offset this by two millimeters both sides and then offset. If I double click on this now to open up the shape editor I'm going to create a flat plane and this is going to be minus 0.5 millimeters and just add that. If I close the shape editor now and go to the 3D view there you can see that that's added a channel going around the ring. So now what I want to do is to paste the Celtic knot that I've just saved to the clip art library around this particular ring. So if I go to the 2D view and instead of using the relief clip art library I'm going to come down to this drop down and use paste relief along a vector. So there's my Celtic knot. I'm going to select the relief file and open that. Now as you can see this is quite large and what I'm going to do is to just center that and make it quite a lot smaller so it fits within the band. So if I just zoom in on there and then just bring that down to let's say around about there and just going to move that out of the way for the time being. If I just zoom out and I'm going to select the center line. I'm going to adjust to fit exactly and paste that there. So there you can see that's pasted that all along there. Just close the clip art library. And now if we go to the 3D view, there you can see that that's pasted a relief all the way around that ring. So now if I wish to make that a little bit higher, for instance, just go back to the 2D view, double click on the vectors and let's add a flat of let's say 0.25 millimeters and then just close that. 
go back to the 3D view there you can see that's brought the relief up in height by 0.25 millimeters so there you can see we have our finished ring produce relatively easily and what I'm going to do for the next demonstration is to elaborate on this just a little bit I'm going to use the clip art library again but I'm going to use a new feature called the relief cookie cutter to cut a part of the relief library away and then use that part to wrap around a ring so I'm going to go to new project again I'm not going to save the changes and I'm going to go to models and create a flat plane now I'm going to open up my clip art library as you can see there's my Celtic knot still saved within there I'm going to come up to crosses and select cross number 6 and I'm just going to center that and then paste that in close my clip art library go to the 3D view I'll just rotate this around so you can see this so here we have just a basic cross pendant and what I want to do is to just cut part of this weave away so I can use that to wrap around a ring so the way that I'm going to do that is to go to the 2D view and I'm going to preview the relief if I just zoom in on here I'm going to create a boundary from relief and if I was to select this at the moment it would just create a boundary of the overall relief and what I want to do is to just use a boundary for the weave so what I need to do is to set the height for the actual boundary so I'm going to use a height range and let's say the minimum height of 1.3 millimeters and create boundary so there you can see that that's a little bit high at the moment it's not going to the bottom of the weave so I'm going to undo that change it to 1.2 millimeters and create boundary so there you can see that's starting to look a little bit better but if I just zoom in here you can see that the vector is not differentiating between the inside shoulder of the cross and the outside of this weave here so I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to try 1.22 create the boundary so there you can see that that's created two different boundaries for me so if I zoom back out now I can turn off the preview relief and I'm just going to delete all of the outside vectors because I no longer need those and I'm just going to preview the relief again if I just select all of the weave vectors I'm going to open up the model now and just show you the front relief and what I'm going to use is called the relief cookie cutter which is here what this will actually do is use the vector as a cutting boundary and whatever is inside this particular vector will be sent to a new layer which will be a copy of the original layer but be renamed for in this instance relief layer cookie cut and the original layer will be left with a hole in the relief so if I just click relief cookie cut keep an eye here on the relief layers and you will see relief layer cookie cut new layer if I select that now here you can see it's just left the inside of that particular vector on that layer if I go to the original layer you can see that's cut that part out so I no longer need the original layer so I'm going to delete that and if I just zoom in a little bit I'm going to create a rectangle this is going to be 5mm wide and I'm just going to center that and I'll just move that down to there and this is the part that I'm going to cut out I need it matching up at the bottom so I'm just going to transform this and move that up to there if I just zoom in make sure that this is matching 
to there. So I just need to move this down just a touch again as I've moved it at the top. So I'll just move this down to there and that should match up perfectly now. If I select the rectangle, I'm going to double click on it and click zero rest. What this will do is delete all of the outside of this rectangle. So as you can see that's got rid of the outside and I'm going to also use this rectangle to actually crop the sheet. So I'll go up to edit and crop. So there you can see that's crops that. I'm going to just select all of my vectors now and delete those because I no longer need those. And I'm just going to reposition my datum point. So I'll go up to model and set position as center pixel and that will create a new datum point for me. If I go into the 3D view now, rotate that round, there you can see basically the weave that I've cut out of the cross. So I'm just going to rename the relief layer to weave and I'm going to open up my clip art library and drop this into my Jewel Smith demo folder. So there you can see I'm just grabbing it and dropping it within there. So that's saved my weave there. So I can close my clip art library now and I'm going to create a new model this time a rotary shank. The width is going to be 15 millimeters. I'm not going to update the project as it's already saved within the clip art library. And I'm just going to go straight into paste relief along a vector. Select my weave relief and open that. Now I need to rotate this by 90 degrees to show it's running in the right direction. And I'm just going to select the center line and paste that there. Just select my bit of clip art and then I can close the clip art library. If I go to the 3D view, there you can see that's created a wrap of this particular weave. I'm just going to smooth this out just a touch so it gets rid of all of the little nasty edges. I'll just click apply. And what I'm going to do now is to create a band to fit around this. So I'm going to open up my front relief and I'm going to rename this relief layer to weave. And I'm going to call this band. And I'm going to unwrap that now. I'm going to do this within the 3D view this time. So I'll turn on my vectors and I'm going to offset this center line. So I'm going to offset that by 2.5 millimeters both sides. And then I'm going to offset that again by one millimeter outwards. Close my offset vectors and double click on it just to create a flat at 0.5 high. Add that. Then if I shift select the inside ones, I'm going to create another flat at one millimeters. This will create a shoulder on either side for me. So if you just add that and then close. Just rotate this round. There you can see that's placed the weave within this particular channel of the ring. So if I just wrap this now, you can see that's created a ring. Now you can see that this weave is a little bit high at the moment. What I need to do is just change that to merge high. And there you can see that that's our finished ring. So what I'm going to do now is to add this to our component library. So we can use this at a later date and change the size of this at will. So the way to do that is I'm going to add this to the assembly. So I'm going to create a triangular mesh. I'm going to close with a flat plane. And I'm going to add that to the project. Close that. Here you can see in the assembly tree now I have a rotary axis shank. I'm going to go into assembly, change the lights for this. I'm going to use uh, 18 carats 
light box gold and I'm not going to have any background for this. If this ever happens to you where the rendering looks a bit rubbish to be honest that's because the model is still showing along with the assembly so if I turn off the front and the back reliefs then you can see that that gives me a much better rendering. So if I go home now what I'm going to do is to export this model so I'm just going to save that if I come up one directory here you can see all of the component library and I'm going to save this a free DA file within the Celtic Wedding Rings folder so I'm going to call this cross weave and then just save that there and then what I need to do is to create a thumbnail for this so it gives a preview within the component library so I'm just going to tile vertically and I'm going to make this window in the 3D view a lot smaller now you need to make this quite square if it's a rectangle the image will skew and distort and it just will not look right so let's say for instance there that looks fine I'll use that as my thumbnail I'll go to window and say 3D view image now I'm still in Celtic wedding rings I'm going to change that to a JPEG image and I'm going to call this cross weave the same as the 3DA file and then save that there I can now make this larger again if I go to the libraries now and go to Celtic Wedding Rings here you can see a cross weave that I've just created so that's available for me to select in there but if I select that now here you can see it's not giving me an option for what sizes I want to use what I need to do for that is to select rotary axis shank and select properties and just make a note of the sizes so 16.8 let's say and the width is 7 this is going to be a lot easier in the future I'm not going to have to write these sizes down and set up these dimensions this is going to get a lot nicer in the future but for now this is what we're going to have to do so if we go home and go back to my component library select cross weave and when it says advanced options I'm going to just select the arrow here you can see dimension 1 I'm going to make that active and I'm going to type in shank diameter now this has to be spelt exactly like so no spaces and a capital S and a capital D otherwise the program won't recognize this actual size so the size is 16.8 and I'm going to untick X and apply that so there you can see it's created it's saying that the shank diameter is 16.8 so now I'm going to go to dimension 2 make that active and I'm going to change the name or the description of this to shank width again this has got to be spelt exactly like so and I'm going to change the size to 7 I'm going to untick Y and Z and apply that so there you can see shank width is 7 so that should have set up the sizes for this particular ring so now when I want to use this ring again in the future I can just click on it within the component library and then just select what size ring I want so if I go home now and I'm going to make a duplicate of this ring if I click libraries here we have my cross weave if I select that here you can see I can change the standard and I can change the size so let's say a size S and I'm going to change the width to 6 millimeters, and then import that so that's created the duplicate of that I'm just going to move this out of the way so you can see and I'll just zoom out so there you can see we have two separate rings different sizes and I could just change that again if I wish just go into the component library and select cross weave so once it's set up it's quite a cool little feature 
if you were having to create lots of different uh, size rings for instance so what I'm going to show you now is to expand on the component library and just show you how easy it is to actually create your rings using the component library so I'm going to create a new project I'm not going to save the changes and I'm going to go into the component library here you can see all of the different things that are available so we've got for instance settings, shanks, signet rings, clusters Celtic wedding rings which you just seen I'm going to select a setting here you can see we have lots and lots of settings available within there if you happen to create your own designs for this or you'd like to see any included please get in touch with us and we will make sure that these are added to the component library so I'm just going to choose this 4mm setting here I can change the gem diameter if I wish let's say 4.2mm and import that so there you can see that's imported my setting there I'm going to choose a shank uh, I think I'll use a Tiffany collet change that to a size Q and the width change that to 2.5mm and import that so if I just zoom out, there you can see that that's created my new ring in literally a matter of seconds. If I wanted to change this particular setting, I could. If I go to assembly, just to open up the setting, which is here. And let's say, for instance, the claw. I didn't want that particular claw. I'm just going to hide that so it's not showing and let's say for instance the diamond I need to move that down let's change the step to 0.05 here you can see I can move that down or up I could do the same for the under bezel so there you can see that's moving up uh, the top bezel could do exactly the same move that down move it up and I'm going to adjust the claw now I just want four prongs for this so I'm going to show the original claw which is there so it's just got I've just got one claw there I'm going to make that a little bit larger so I'm just going to scale that so I'm going to change that to one millimeter in X I'm going to copy and paste this percentage value into Y just so it remains within scale to each other and I'm going to rotate and copy this now so I'm going to do it in Z four times total of 360 degrees I need to make sure that I select nest inside new assembly and then accept that and select the new claw and I think I'll rotate that by 45 degrees so that's moved that around there so if I just go home now rotate that round and I'll just zoom in a touch now that might be a little bit too high for me let's say I can just easily get around that by selecting the setting and then select scale so at the moment it's 6 millimeters. change that to 5.5 millimeters and apply that then you can see that's dropped that down uh, let's say for instance I wanted to move the setting up as you can see it's sticking out the back here just nudge the whole thing up if I wished and there you can see I've modified that setting again in a matter of seconds really now if I wanted to change that setting let's say I wanted a square setting I could just hide that setting go back to the assembly and select libraries go to settings come down to square settings and I'll choose this 4mm one I'll just import that straight in so there you can see that's given me a new setting I could if I wished let's say for instance move that by 45 degrees just so it creates something a little bit different and I could also change the stone in there if I wished just select 
the stone and edit the color to let's say a diamond and there you can see I have a new ring so relatively easy to just create some rings using the component library so finally what I'm going to show you now is to create clustered rings so if I just come up to clusters and rings and I think I'll choose this one here I'll just import that straight in so there you can see that's a cluster there and I'm going to use this shank here I'll just import that straight in so there you can see a matter of seconds creating a cluster ring so I can just for instance change the middle gem let's say that I wanted that to be a ruby I could just do that quite easily so there we have a finished clustered ring so I hope that this demonstration was useful to you and thanks for your time and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time goodbye